In video 10, I want to talk about lists. And if you have studied programming in a more theoretical sense, maybe for an exam, you may well have come across the term array. And lists are really Python's version, Python's implementation of arrays. So you can kind of take lists and arrays to be fairly interchangeable. We'll also look at both one-dimensional and two-dimensional lists, which, are, which work in the same way as one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays. Okay, before we start talking about lists, let's just start talking about more of an umbrella term which lists fall under. So lists are an example of a data structure. And the data structure is an organized collection of data. And there are different data structures both in theoretical programming and also in actual languages. Python has four main types. We have lists, we have sets, we have tuples and dictionaries. We're just going to look at lists in this video, but I'll mention where the other ones differ as we go. So why do we have data structures? Why do we need to have organized collections of data? Because, well, I mean, we could just set a bunch of variables. Say we're trying to, say our collection of data is our shopping list, so the items on our list. We could do, you know, item one equals uh, an apple, uh, item two equals chocolate, if you're feeling a little bit less healthy from the apple. And so on, we could do a whole whole sequence of variable assignments, but this is not really a very efficient use of our, our code. It's going to be very difficult to manage. If we try and package this in a nice organized collection, it's going to be much, much easier. And with two items, this is not a great example, but if we took this down and did you know hundreds of items, item 150 if you've got a massive order, having so many variables is not going to be very useful at all. So instead we could set a list, and again lists are identifiers, so we can call this a shopping list. And when I say identifier, I mean I can set the name, it's not given to me by the program, so I call it shopping list. Same sort of rules as with variables, it's best to start at lowercase, best not to start with numbers, and avoid words like um, sum or len, words which are built into Python. So shopping list, and the syntax for defining, or, uh, yeah, defining lists is with square brackets this time. And my first item here was apple, so I'm gonna put apple. But after I do this string, I'm going to put a comma, and then I can put my second item in, which was chocolate, and I can continue this up to item 150 if I want to. It would still be quite unwieldy, but it's all under one name. Now if I run this, well, we haven't done anything yet. Let's just talk about this a second. So I've got two items here. I've got item one and item two. The first thing to say is people think of a think of lists in different ways. You might think of a variable as being like a box, and the box has got a name which we give it to, and inside the box, you know, we've got the in this case apple as our string is stored inside the box. A list is like a series of boxes but stored right next to each other and belonging to the same name. If I just switch to interactive mode to just show you a few things, press enter, I've now defined this list called shopping list with just two items. We say defining because really we're defining the structure here. We've got two items stored in one dimension, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, I can use, in very similar to a variable, I can change the values after they have been defined. So I can uh, re you know, kind of redefine this with just maybe just apple, so with one item instead of two, press enter, that's perfectly fine. If I was using a tuple, which is another data structure I mentioned earlier, uh, I couldn't do this. A tuple is said to be immutable. You can't change it after it's first defined. A bit like how a constant can't be changed after it's first defined, except for in Python, we don't have constants. I can also have an empty list. So if I am maybe not quite sure what I'm going to put in it, a bit like how we might initialize a variable to be a value like zero or an empty string, we can also set a list to be empty by having no item in it. By the way, in list, for the items are separated by commas. And so I've got no commas here, I've got no items, that's perfectly fine. And we looked at how strings can be accessed via their index or the index of different characters. So if I do Guido as a name here, assign Guido to variable names. I don't know why I put plural, but names. Um, we can index this by going names and following it with square brackets and putting an index number. We start counting from zero. So capital G here is the zero index, the first item, but the, the zero index, or not really item, first character. So we get G, uh, and so we can index it using that. And really, a list works in the same way. 
uh, a string that's kind of coming from a list really. So if I just set another one, do a names properly this time, just overriding this variable. So we can't have both names as a variable and a list at the same time, this will just get rid of the variable. Uh, set Guido, and let's do Alice, Bob, and Charlie, ABC, like that. So we've got now four items. I can in the same way use my index number, so again zero in this case is not going to be capital G, this is going to be Guido, like that because we're indexing the zeroth item in the list or the zeroth index. If I wanted to get Charlie returned and I used the index number of four because Charlie is the fourth item, this is gonna give me an error, an index error because my index is out of range because really Charlie is the fourth item but has an index of three. So I should have used three, not four. And we can use all of the same indexing tricks we did with strings. You know, if I wanna start at index number two and just continue to the end, I can do that. That's perfectly fine, we get Bob and Charlie. If I want to use a negative index to start counting from the end, I can do this time maybe uh, a negative index of minus three, and then again, just continue this to the end. We're now going to get Alice, Bob and Charlie. I can reverse the order in my list using a third argument to that index. Um, if I want to swap it around, lists have got an order which we can change. Of, uh, structures like a set doesn't have an order, the actual order doesn't matter of the items but they do in lists. Just to show you a few useful functions and methods, there are loads and loads of ones like with strings, I won't show you all of them. Uh, if you need a specific one, best just to google it in all honesty because there will be one built in or some method, say so you want to sort it or reverse it or something like that. You can look it up, I already showed you reversing actually earlier but anyway. Uh, so a useful one is checking the length, so in this case I've got an empty list and I can check the length with the len function. So I can type it in list and I should get zero here because nothing's in it. If I add one to it, so you might think you can, once you have defined it like this, maybe if you want to add an item, you use the zero index and set it to hello. The issue with this is we get an error because it says the list assignment index is out of range, which it is because the zero index doesn't exist yet because we've got no items at all. And so Python can't add in the item, it can't change the item which doesn't exist. So instead we have to use a different, this case, in this case a method, not a function, because we apply it directly to our object, in this case it's a list, so we do our list name and a dot, and then we do our, in our method which is append. So if we are appending a item, we are just adding the item to the end. And we don't have to worry about using any index because we're just putting it to the end, no matter how big the list is at the moment. Now if I type in list, and let's just do the length actually, length of the list, I should get one. Now we have our item in the list. If I want to get rid of this item, I can use list.remove, and this will get rid of your first instance of the item. If you have multiple instances of this item, it will only get rid of the first one. Um, and we can check the length again, and we should now have zero, because it's got rid of hello. And like we did with strings, we can use the in keyword to get a Boolean value to, to see if we've got a string in our list. So if I do, uh, let's do Python in list, we should get true returned. And of course, if we were doing this in script mode, we would need to set, assign that to a variable. Uh, if we wanted to do a C++ to see if it's not in the list, we could do uh, not in the list. So we use a Boolean operator not to just reverse it, and because C++ is not in the list, we get true. That is like a search which doesn't tell us where it is, so we can use list.index and then supply our item we're looking for, and it should return us the index, index it exists at. If I do list.index and do C++ this time, like that, we get an error because it's not in the list. So you may need to do this check first, and then have an if statement with this as a condition, and then you can use the index as well to prevent this error. Just to show you a few more things we can do, say we've got two lists defined like this. I can use what is either the addition or concatenation operator, depending on the data type. And if I add these together, let's see what happens. Well, it puts the two lists together. So despite the items here being integers, it doesn't work like normal addition, it works like concatenation, it puts them together. If you want to maybe change ABC so that it also includes XYZ as well, so kind of like appending another list to it not just one item in that case. We can do the augmented assignment and do plus equals and then X, Y, Z. Then if I get X, if I get ABC again, uh, it'll have all of the items in X, Y, Z appended as well. 
So I've got a list which is uh, one, three, four, five, and I just missed out two by mistake, and I want to go back and change it because the lists are ordered, and because we have these fixed indices, I can't just add in two and it would fix itself. So a few ways you could approach this. One of them might be to try and change the index of this case. If you want to change three to two, this would be an index of one. I could change this to two. The issue being it doesn't really fix the problem because it just replaces three and so we're also missing three between two and four. So instead we can use a, a method in this case, which means I have to put the list name, then a dot, and then the method here is called insert. And it takes two arguments in the brackets. The first one is the index, we want to insert it. So in this case, because I've made a mistake here, I want it to be index two to get three back. Then I'll do a comma and then I'll put in three, which I want to be put into that index. I can press enter. And now if I get my list and have a look at it, we should have index, uh, well, index two with um, the item three under it. Okay, I want to end by just talking about dimensions, which so I think it always sounds a lot harder than it is, so I'll try not to overcomplicate it. So, so far we've just looked at lists which operate in one dimension. So thinking like, you know, an x-axis, the x-axis on its own is just a line, it is operating in one dimension, and so far we've only stored data in one dimension, in one direction really, just horizontally. So we've kind of got like a row of data here, one, two, and three are our items in this list, it's only stored in one direction. Alternatively, we can use two dimensions, so a two dim list, thinking about adding in that y-axis alongside the x-axis. We can now have a second dimension, and really in practice, this just means we've got a list within another list. So I start off my list like usual, but instead of putting in like a single item like this, I'm going to put in another list. So I add in square brackets, I can now just do one, two, and three in this one. I close off this list, but as our first item, so I'll do a comma, then add in a second item, which is again going to be another list, and let's do four and five and six. I close this off, and make sure I close off again, because really we've got in our first position, our first index, index zero, we've got a list, one, two, three. Then in our second uh, position, our first index, we've got four, five, six, again in its own list. And it's why we have double square brackets here. So. If I have a look at this, so one dim is really easy to index. We index with just one number. We've looked at how we start counting at zero. Now with two dim, if I do exactly the same thing and use an index of zero, press enter, I get my first item, which in this case is a list on its own. So one, two, three. But if I want to access one of the items in this sort of sub list, I have to use a second, a second index number. So I'll do zero, say I want to get uh, one in this case, I'll do another zero because in this list, one is the zero index. Press enter and I get just one. If I want to get just five, I'm going to again just make sure I use my identifier and then because I want because five is in this second list in index one, I'm going to put down one. That is our sort of row, if you can imagine a table. And now we're looking at the column. So we've looked at the rows. Now we're looking at the column, we want to get, I think I said five, which is our index number one in that list. Again, so we have one, one, and this will get us five. So if you are wanting to imagine this 2D array as a, a table, we would have you know one, two, three as a row, then we'd have four, five, six as a second row, and that means our first index number is going to be our row index, and our second index number is going to be our column index because once we have sort of targeted a row, targeted an item, we can then go inside that item and look at the individual um, item within it. So this would be really our column index. But you may not even need to think of it like that, that may have confused you. Uh, so if it has, don't worry, because uh, if you've understood it, that's fine. And really you, you learn this by playing around with it a little bit. So trying to figure out, you know, I want to get a six, this is gonna be a first index of one, a second index of two. I get six. You can also have in the, you can also have dimensions further than two. You know we can kind of imagine a three-dimensional object. We can't um, we can't imagine a 4D, 5D, 6D object because it, they don't exist in our real world. They can exist in Python. So a 3D array. Let me try and do one here. Okay, so I've done a what I believe is a three-dimensional array here. It takes, it takes a little bit of concentration because the characters start to blur together. So you can see here, we first of all have our sort of outer list, which is fine. Our first item in this list is a 2D array of itself. So we've got, 
so it ends uh, it ends here so we've got within it its first item is a list on its own its second item is another list then we have a comma which is for our outer list and then we have the same thing over here as well so let's try this and try and index this it's going to need three index numbers to target the individual items in this uh, in this case we could just start easy and do um, a, a sort of a triple zero index like this and we should get one because we're looking in our first item and then our first item again and then our first item is one great to get 12 it's not going to be quite as simple because i haven't done this in a nice you know consistent order because i've got two items in our first level our first dimension horizontal so this would be i want to get one because we start counting at zero again in each of our sort of vertical lists we've got two lists so again i'll have one here and then finally once we get beyond that we're now in this list we want uh, the third item which would have an index of two so i should get 12 here which i do which is good and so on so i could do a fourth dimension as well which will just confuse things even more if you've got that many dimensions you would have kind of questioned why you've got so many uh, it seems unnecessarily confusing uh, but i'd really recommend you have a play around with this uh, set some set some lists i should say yourself and practice indexing practice targeting individual items to try and get your head around how this works i would now suggest you pause the video and have a go at these two questions which are not too long question one is a little bit tricky i think or maybe you won't find it tricky let's see uh, about predicting the output from two blocks of code and question two is about programming a tiny little program to mimic what might happen at the guest at the door of a party with like maybe a bouncer checking a list and this will require various things to look at in this video and also vf statements from the last video